that's good water. I can't pronounce the brand of water that this is. It's from Poland and it's absolutely delicious. But you know what I can pronounce? Octane One. We're gonna build an Octane One Void Chromoly Dirt Jumper. I'm gonna put it together. It's taken me a year to accumulate these parts. So let's go through it. Let's build this thing up. Let's see what it looks like at the end because it's Ray's season and I want a fresh new bike for Ray's Indoor Bike Park. Links to all the parts in this bike build are in the description. Let's take a look at it. Let's go over some of the features of this frame. So this is the Octane One Void. It's in a color called Pigeon Blue and it is absolutely stunning. It's got this matte finish, uh, beautiful welds. The welds look phenomenal. It is a tapered head tube. And it's funny because most people were under the impression that it is a straight steerer, but it does come from the factory with a tapered head tube. This is actually a 2020 model. I don't know if they even still make this frame anymore, but I am pretty stoked about this one because it's gonna make for a really good bike build. It's got 135 by 10 rear sliding dropouts, IS mount brakes. Uh, it has an integrated uh, seat collar here, so you don't need to add a collar. It is a threaded bottom bracket. It is a BSA or Euro threaded bottom bracket. You could use either. Euro bro bottom bracket is basically the BMX standard. Chrome Ollie, 60, uh, 4130 Chrome Ollie has mounts here, which I believe these are for a gyro, if you choose to install a gyro. Let's get this beauty up and running. Let's do this. My goal with this build was to put together a bike that will perform like a high-end dirt jumper, but priced in that middle tier. With the product shortages in 2021, it took me almost a year to get all the parts I needed without breaking the bank. Let's get on with this build. The first step is to install the bottom bracket. So what we're using is a Euro bottom bracket. This one is by MCS Racing. Uh, the Euro bottom bracket is the same as a BSA threaded bottom bracket. It's just made for BMX and it's designed to fit BMX three-piece cranks, which is what we're gonna be using. Uh, so we have the two sides of it, the drive side, the non-drive side, and then a spacer. It's the nice thing about these bottom brackets is that you don't need a special tool. All you need is an adjustable wrench to tighten these down, which is great. Uh the MCS bottom bracket doesn't need any special tools to install. A wide mouth adjustable wrench is all you need. So this one here is a tapered head tube. And the nice thing about this particular tapered head tube is that this is an IS or integrated, integrated headset, which means that you don't have to press in any cups into this. It, the bearings will seat right into these recesses here in the, in the frame, which means you don't need any special tools to do this. You don't need a, you don't need a, a cup press. You don't need any of that stuff which is nice. Again, those things can be expensive, you, or even just making one on your own from the hardware store, there are ways to do that. You don't have to do that here. All you need to do is have your have your have uh, the proper headset, which is an IS, in this case, um, tapered, one and, a, one and an eighth, one and a half, uh, and you're good to go. So we're gonna install this Manitou Circus Expert Air Fork. This is a pretty good standby go-to fork for a lot of dirt jumpers that are out there. It's reliable, it has, this is 32 millimeter stanchions, I believe. So it's not the burliest of, of dirt jump forks, but it is a workhorse of a fork. Uh, the reverse arch is supposed to add more stiffness to it. Uh, I do like that this has a 20 millimeter through axle. Um, I have the Circus Comp on my old dirt jumper. So this is a uh, step up from that. It has rebound adjustment, it has compression, and then air is filled in over here. The other thing, if you notice on this fork, it's a straight steerer. We're gonna use this adapter crown race, and what this does, it adapts the straight steer tube to a one and a half inch uh, tapered head tube. So what it does, it's a little bit smaller hole here 
where it fits on there, but then it will still seat properly in here. And what we're gonna do is I have this little, little ring that you get from Cane Creek, since I'm using a Cane Creek 40 headset, and this will, uh, we'll use this when we pound this down and it will help to pound it down evenly without damaging it. Damn, that PVC pipe is way too long. Oh, look at that, it worked. <laughs> and there you go, voila. Next, we're going to size up the steerer tube. I'm using a dedicated cutting guide here, but you can use an old stem or just cut it carefully. Although I wouldn't leave this to chance, so use some sort of a guide. All right, so now that we have it cut down, and I took uh, off camera, I sanded this down, I couldn't find my file. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the star nut. There are a couple of ways to install the star nut. The first is to just thread in the screw, then tap it in with a hammer. I'm not a fan of this approach, although a lot of people do it. The second is to just get a dedicated tool which runs anywhere from $20 to $40. The star nut basically helps snug up the fork to the frame. A properly installed star nut. With the fork in place, we headed back to the bottom bracket to install the crankset. The chain ring, or front sprocket in this case, is really easy to install. No special tools are needed here. We're using the stolen brand Mob V4 crankset. This is the same crankset we used on the Mongoose PT26 upgrades a few videos back. The front sprocket is made by stolen brand, and it's a 28 tooth. Now that we have the crankset in place, it's time to get the wheels set. I think this one is the, this is the front wheel. This is going to be perfect for what we're looking for. It's really nice looking, very lightweight. So here we go. Here's the rear wheel. Rear wheel is always the, the one everybody wants to know about. So this has got a 11 tooth driver. We're going to do 11 to 28 tooth. So 28 teeth in the front, 11 teeth in the rear should make for a really good kind of firm pedal which will be good. It's getting a bit late and I gotta be up early. So we're gonna finish this build tomorrow. Uh, but in the meantime, what I'll do is I'm gonna unpackage the tires and then we'll uh, let them sit and kind of get their shape overnight. Oh, so stoked. All right, time to put these things back on. I'm using Michelin Pilot Pump tires. These are chunky 26 by 2.3 slick tires that work really well on pump tracks and smooth dirt jumps. We're using a half-link chain by Odyssey BMX. Half-links are a little heavier than a standard chain, but they can be helpful to fine-tune a chain length on a bike like this. On this bike, the dropouts are really short. This means I won't be able to use chain tensioners. I tried two different kinds and neither would fit. We're going with Spank 40 millimeter rise handlebars in a Deity Copperhead stem. We're going to be installing these Magura MT Sports. They're two piston brakes. They're based off of the MT4s and MT8s. They're inexpensive. They are lightweight. Um, I know some people are going to give me grief about this lever, which is made of composite, but I'm not overly concerned with it. No frills, but smooth power. Finishing off the cockpit with Deity Lockjaw Grips. These have a little more cushion than what I prefer, but I'm all for trying something different. I went for this dark tan pivotal seat by Cult for a touch of class. This has to be the most beautiful bike I've built to date. Let's take a few moments to admire this beauty. What I love about dirt jumpers is that building and maintaining one is fairly simple. You need very few special tools and they can take a world of abuse. I can't believe it took a year to get all the parts I needed for this bike. 
but a little patience and careful shopping got me a bike that is rock solid and gorgeous. So I think a bike this special needs to have a name. What do you think we should call it? I have an idea. You're my boy, Blue! Let me know what you think and tell me what you think we should call it in the comments. And initial ride impressions? Well, I think I need to tweak the cockpit a little and shorten the brake hose, but otherwise, it's magnificent. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching. Remember, all these bikes are built with love.